question that came in on Wednesday, okay. and I saved it for today for you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my question is for. Uh, um, my son is four years old and recently started ABA therapy part-time. Uh, my daughter is five years old and recently started kindergarten. When we sit down to dinner at the end of the day, my husband is very good about asking our daughter about her school day, what she learned, etc. However, he not only refuses to ask our son about his day, but he also changes the subject when his therapy comes up. My son, of course, does not understand why his dad is acting this way. I make sure to spend extra time each day listening to my son and asking about his experiences, but I don't know what I can do to improve the situation with his father and to help my husband become more comfortable and accepting with our new, since his diagnosis, reality. Help. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, a lot there. So w would you like to start with talking about the dad or would you like to start talking about the fact that he's having ABA therapy part-time? Uh, well, okay. Well, let's hit the part-time part, -time part okay. first. I know that's not the main point of the question, but that'll right. be quick and then we can get but into it. But it jumped out at me. I'm yeah. sure it jumped out at you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it, each child is different, obviously, and we don't know this particular child, right. but the, the most scientifically proven treatment model for children with autism around the age of four yeah. is intensive one on one ABA lasting for at least two or more years. So uh, really what the science shows is if your child is about four, they should be getting really more like 30 to 40 hours per week of one to one treatment. Um, and you know, again, we don't know this particular child and their right. unique strengths and, and, um, and areas of need. Uh, but that is the proven model. So that would be something, well, the first thing that I might mention is um, what's the level of intensity and if it's part time, if it's fairly low, say a few hours a week or 10 hours a week, what's the reason for that? And yeah. if the reason for that is, um, you know, if there's, a, if there's a good reason for it, then okay. But if the reason is, uh, you know, somebody says the kid doesn't really need it or there's no funding right. for it or there's, there's too many other things going on, all of those would be, you know, things to discuss, to think about really what's the priority here and, and do we want to really start doing what we know from science is the most proven right. treatment approach and really give that a shot for a year or two. One of the things that you said a couple of weeks ago that has stuck with me so much was we were talking about the fact that you know, it seems that with this insurance boon, I'm hearing a lot of parents who are saying, oh, we're getting 10 or 15 hours a week with three and four year olds. And and that the excuse that they're being told a lot of the times is, well, they're so high functioning, they just don't need more than that. Right, and that's what incorrect. I, yeah, what I heard you say was that the, that the research shows that giving the higher hours to those kids who have more skills is sometimes the best case scenario. They actually get the best outcome from the intensive best outcome. treatment. Yeah, okay. and you know, the research isn't entirely clear on that yet. And so I'm not saying if your child is one of the lower functioning or, or kids who need more help, that they also shouldn't have intensive services. Right. We're not saying that, but I am saying the one existing study that really compared outcomes for kids with higher IQ to lower IQ, all of whom got really intensive services were the kids with the, the, um, the kids who were less affected, the kids who were less severe, actually uh, had a much larger response to treatment. Right. So if someone tells you, well, your kid's really high functioning, he's really verbal, he probably doesn't need the same level of intensity. If he's under the age of five or so, that statement is not supported by the science. It okay. might be someone's opinion, okay? And right. they could even be right, it's possible but it's not supported by scientific research. Okay, so I for, so that's the first thing that I wanted to address. Now, getting to the, the real question that they were wanting answered, a dad who right. is struggling in sure. this moment for some acceptance. This right. is not a new story. Right. We hear this story all the time. Absolutely. I myself uh, you know, live with a fabulous man who struggled uh, to be able to come to terms with what did this mean. That's right. Um, and, and pretty much every parent that we have ever had come in and talk on this show talks about that fact that one parent or the other, the, the vast majority of the time, it's that the mom has taken action and that the dad is right. struggling to catch up but that isn't always the case. Right, not always. But it's very rare that both parents went, oh, okay, autism, let's right. run and do this. Right. So the first thing that I want to say is, you know, you're right on schedule. Right. That's you're normal. not alone. Right. This happens. It's not insurmountable. Right. It feels horrible in the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, you, you are of the male persuasion. <laughs> 
I sometimes think that uh, you guys are a different species, <laughs> but maybe you can help us to to figure out, you know, some strategies to help this dad based on some of the things that you've seen over the years. Sure. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to echo what you said, which is this is this kind of um, sort of disagreement or discord or different perspectives on, yeah. you know, being a newly diagnosed family, different perspectives between the mom and the dad is completely normal. Yeah. And I'd ask, you know, I challenge you to come up with any major challenge in your life as a family where mom and dad are 100% on the same page for the whole yeah. thing. That never happens, right? It can't. I mean, can't happen. And if, yeah. and if it did happen, then you guys wouldn't be very good balance for each other. You'd just right. be the same person, right? right? So it's totally normal and totally expected that they're going to have different perspectives. And it's very common for one parent to really dive in headfirst and the other parent to pull back a little bit and yeah. be maybe more avoidant, maybe a little bit more in denial, maybe a little bit less accept accepting of the situation. Totally normal. Um, the first thing that I'd say is the most important thing, um, and that's, this is honestly to all married couples, is priority number one, take care of each other, yeah. right? Have empathy and think about what it's like to be in the other person's shoes. Because it's totally normal and very easy for me to say, I see the situation this way and he should see the situation the same way I do, right? Yeah. That's what we all do. That's our first reaction. Yeah. And as it turns out, that doesn't work very well in a marriage, <laughs> right? What actually works, if you want to have a functional, healthy marriage that's actually supportive of each other, what actually works is saying, I see it this way, standing in my shoes. He over there standing in his shoes with a different perspective and a different background, a different history and different emotions sees it a different way. Yeah. And it's not about right or wrong. And it's not about who's the yeah. boss. And it's not about who wins or loses. It's about how can I support my spouse and how can my spouse support me? Um, so one practical step to take is to consider maybe sort of a division of labor type of thing. So in this case, it sounds like the mom's really gung-ho and she's really into it and she's about the therapy and she's going for it and that's yeah. awesome. Some In some marriages, um, I've seen couples successfully do sort of a division of labor thing where maybe the dad is in charge of something else. Yeah. And it's not that he has to be in denial, it's just yeah. that he's in charge of some other major aspect of the household that's really important yep. um, and needs to be taken care of. And then that's something mom doesn't have to worry about so much. Yep. And also then the mom doesn't have to really worry so much how much is my husband in, involved in this. This is my job. That other thing is yep. his job. Doesn't mean he doesn't care. Doesn't mean he's trying to avoid. It just means he's really good at this other stuff. I'm really good at this. Yeah. And let's support each other by doing what we're good at and not yeah. being resentful. Yeah. And I, you know, we've seen this so many times and I think about my personal circumstances with my husband and I, I always think about Holly Robinson. Pete came on the show and said, you know, how common this is and that there came a day when she, you know, her husband, we call it uh, the, ri the river in Egypt, denial, right? Floating on the <laughs> river in Egypt syndrome. Um, and that her husband, Rodney Pete, very well-known professional athlete, was in 68 kinds of denial. He was floating on that river. And uh, it was frustrating for her because she felt the urgency and that there came a day when she said, look, Rodney, I'm on Autism Street and you're over here floating on the river in Egypt and we need to get to together or you're going to be over there by yourself. Right. And that the one thing that she says now that she regrets is she said, I, she says, I wish I were more compassionate. Right. I wish I knew the end of the story, which was that Rodney was going to get on my street right. and that I could have just been a little bit more compassionate about the fact that he wasn't getting it in the same time span that I was. Absolutely. And it's so easy within couple relationships to make the situation uh, about ideas and resentment and perspective and philosophies and worldviews yeah. and everything else when really at the end of the day what it's about on a daily basis is your behavior yeah. that you do with respect to one another and so if there's something small that your husband can do that would be helpful for you yeah. it's totally okay to ask for that not yeah. make a big deal out of it it's not about him being in denial it's just about can you play with him for 10 minutes? Something there that he would go. like to do. Not at the end of the world. What dad is going to say, no, I'm not going to play with my son, right? right? right. Uh, whereas if you say, can't you get on this autism bandwagon? Can't you understand right. what's going on here? He's going to say, no, that's right. your perspective. My perspective is different. Right. But can you play for 10 minutes? Can yes. you... Uh, can you go do the bills while I focus on getting my son's program yeah. together? Whatever, right? right. But, uh, you know, pick a few small behaviors that are reasonable right. and let's compromise and focus on what we can do today that can yeah. make, you know, everyone feel a little bit better today rather than worrying about what it represents or what it means or what it, you know, yeah. it's not about all that. It's just right. about let's get through today 
supporting each other as much as possible. Absolutely. It's hard not to get resentful. Sure. It's really hard not to get resentful. Um, but I, I will tell you that something, because I was resentful for for a while while my husband took his, his time <laughs> getting on the autism page. I was like, really? <laughs> we got a lot to do. And <laughs> I can use some help. How about a partnership? Um, but, and then when he, when he did get on the page, it was the worst possible day. And then it hit him when we had been taken off of 13 planes and had to drive. 10 hours to get to the wedding we were going to get to sat down to have a meal and my husband burst into tears because that was the moment that he had the realization that he had a child on the autism spectrum and what that meant and I in that moment as my child who was like wrapped in a dish towel because our luggage was separated from us right and I was like really now <laughs> now is the moment and then I put on the compassionate uh, face and said okay let's talk about it let's deal with it and, you know uh you know, and we're so much closer for it, right? But, you know, somebody said to me recently, a dad, and I wish I could remember which dad it was, said, uh, you know, here's the thing. Men like to take care of. We're the hunter-gatherers. We want right. to provide for the family. Right. And when we're presented with an equation that doesn't have an answer... Right. We, we don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah, back up. And, and that they don't have anything to do with it, and they don't... Because there's nothing to be done. Right. And until... And I see this again and again and again, and I keep thinking about it, thinking, you know, there's a certain amount of sense of this. Until the dads see the progress that can be made with ABA therapy, right. that's when it kicks in. That's when the dads get on board and they go, okay, right. there's some action that can be taken. Right. I will get more involved. But that... Until then, the dads frequently don't see it. And you know, and, and again, if you make it concrete and you make it fairly simple, you're likely to get a better reaction. So instead of, you need to get with me and get on the same page so we can make a plan, maybe say something like, here's a list of reinforcers. Go to the store and buy them. Yeah. You know, yeah, separate but, it. Right? Yeah. Just keep it simple. And it's not about me nagging you or you having the same view as me. Yeah. It's about what can we actually do today. Yeah. Um, and even having the conversation, I know early on, I, I, I wanted to have a conversation with my husband about what right. should we do, what should we right. do, what right. should we do, right. and he couldn't do it. Right. And eventually what I did sit down with him and say was, look, I did the research, and this is what we need to do, so this is the, the direction that I feel that we need to go in. I need your support in that. In that moment, he decided to ask a bunch of questions, and I said, if you want to go back and do the research, please do. I can't right. <laughs> do that for you, but I did the research and I'm telling you and now I need your support. And then he would go, okay, we're, right. we're, we're going to do that. Um, That's it's, good advice. it's tough. It's tough, but hang in there. And I love the idea of saying, could you go talk to him for five minutes, 10 minutes? Because right. we don't want to have them not interact with the child. Right, exactly. And maybe the dad doesn't want to talk about the kid's ABA therapy that day, but right. that doesn't mean that he wouldn't want to get down on the floor and play a game with him or go yeah. play the video games with him or go yeah. kick a ball in the backyard. Absolutely. Right? Toss a ball around. Right. Um, the, the thing that I want to say to you, though, too, is I think, and this is parent to parent, um, Get that part time over with. Get get full time, and I think that's going to help you in a couple of different ways. I suspect that if you get that full time ABA program going, quality ABA pro program, then in a period of time, your husband will start to get on board. Sure. So that's what I'm going to urge you to do, and write in and let us know how that all works for you.